what's good youtubers my name's give the great and welcome to our seventh let's play pokemon x and y soul link wonderlock yes you guys this is going to be our seventh let's play and honestly the hype has just set in as i'm recording this video two weeks earlier than you guys are seeing it i mean honestly you guys are probably going to see this on the 17th i'm recording this on the third that's how hyper I am for this let's play. I cannot wait for this let's play to get started, you guys. Obviously, Pokemon Y was the first let's play I did alongside Pokemon Diamond when I first started this channel. And honestly, to be returning back to these games after what seems to be, I think, nine months. Yep, nine months sounds about right. It is honestly amazing. I mean, honestly, when the first, when Pokemon X and Y, when I first got the copy, I was just like, oh my god, 3D looks amazing. I have to play this. So, I'm going to be returning to Pokemon X and Y. Obviously, I did the um, Pokemon Y on the type lock a while ago now. You guys obviously know about that. If you haven't, then you can go ahead and check the description for the playlist information. All the playlists will be there, um, ready for you to watch. And so, yeah, you can check it out there. And we're returning to 6th gen generation with a bind. That's right, you guys. We're going to make this one of the difficult challenges I've done so far with a Soul Link Wonderlog. Inspired by um, the King Nappies and Shady Penguins. Um, current Solok with the gold and silver one they're doing. And obviously, Mudplay's first created the idea. All the credit goes to him. I've decided, you know what? I may as well do a Soul Link as well. But obviously, the whole the whole point of a Soul Link is to do it with two people. I, I unfortunately can't do that because I'm a bit of a loner. And nobody else, in my, nobody else in my crew likes Pokemon. Well, I mean, they do. But it's just like, I've got no way of interacting with them in the minute. So, I'm going to be playing both games myself, but on different save files, obviously. Because I've got the two different copies here. So, I'm going to be doing that. And I'm just rambling on, you guys. But, you know, I got inspired by the King Nappy and the Shady Penguin. I just, and, and I just figured, you know what? This is a great idea. I'm doing it. So... Let's go ahead, and if you guys don't know what the rules are, I'm gonna throw this down. I'm gonna throw it down at you right now. So if you don't know what pretty much what a Nuzlocke is, I'm gonna go going over those rules first. So let's go into the Nuzlocke rules. The first rule of a Nuzlocke is that you can only capture the first Pokemon you encounter on a new route, no second chances. So for example, I think the first encounter you get in X and Y on Route Two, because obviously in Route One there's no grass, and Route Two I think there's a Force Pidgey. So that can be your first encounter and then, you know, your only hope is to try and capture it. But I don't think you can only get, I don't even think you can get Pokeballs and then, you know. Yeah, so I think you get Pokeballs after the Force Pidgey actually. So, you know, whatever encounter you get when you get your Pokeballs, that's your first encounter. Obviously, because the Nuzlocke starts when you get your first Pokeballs. And then obviously, it goes on from there. So, once you encounter your first Pokemon, that's it. That's the only Pokemon you can capture on that route. No second chances. If you don't capture it, then tough luck. You're out of luck until you get onto a new route. But if you do capture that Pokemon, you must nickname all Pokemon for stronger emotional bonds. That's the second rule. This is to, of course, create like a little bond between you and your Pokemon and obviously ensure that hopefully your Pokemon stays around just a little bit longer. But if not, eh, why not? Think of some fun creative names for your Pokemon. The third rule of the of the Nuzlocke, and probably the most important rule of a Nuzlocke, is that if a Pokemon faints, it is considered dead and must be replaced from the party or put in a PC box specifically for dead Pokemon. Now, obviously, guys, I haven't probably haven't released the um, like Pokemon from the party unless, of course, it was Pokemon Diamond because you know I did lose that. Spoilers, but um, yeah. So if if a Pokemon dies. Then it has to be put in a release from party or put in a dead box specifically for dead Pokemon, as the rule states here. Now, that's another lock rules completely under wraps. What I'm now going to be explaining to you guys about is about is the wonder part of the wonder lock. So pretty much, wonder pretty much stands for wonder trade. Obviously, wonder trade being introduced in sixth generation, fantabulous way of making those lock challenges even harder. And pretty much what a wonder lock rule what a wonder lock is is any pokemon you capture has to be put through wonder trade this is treated as a token for that specific route for so for example you can only trade you can only access wonder trade when you've got two or more pokemon in your party so pretty much when you can first get your starter with an x and y you know you can't wonder trade then you have to capture an additional pokemon then you can use wonder trade because you know you have to have a health pokemon in your party at all times so that's why you have to have two or more so pretty much, the when we first start Wonder Training is when we're going to ca hopefully be ca captured our Route 2 encounter. 
and then that's when we start wonder trading from there on. But yeah, so say if I captured a um, a Fletchling on Route 2, I have to put that Pokemon through Wonder Trade and say if I get a, um, what's a reliable Pokemon? An Azuriel. Say if I get an Azuriel from Trade, that's my encounter for Route 2. And then obviously if we want to trade off our starters, say if I pick Chest Pin and we get, oh, I don't know, think of a starter. Say we get Trico, because obviously X and Y and all that's are linked together, so Hoenn starters could be more, Hoenn Pokemon and starters could be more likely because obviously the um wonder trade system and gts systems are linked together within the sixth generation game so you know anything can happen anything can happen but whatever pokemon you get from wonder trade is the encounter you got from that route because of the token however guys you have you have a little notice down here i will be playing i will be implementing dupes and species clause in this let's play this means that if i receive a pokemon from wonder trade i already have i can want to trade again and try to try and get something these different if I, it doesn't matter about the if I capture the same Pokemon like on that route because that's a token for Wonder Trading. So if I if I have two Pidgeys in the token box, that doesn't matter. But if I have two Pidgeys that I got from Wonder Trade, I can trade away the second Pidgey that I got and hopefully try and get a different Pokemon. Do you guys see where I'm going with it? Obviously, that's Dupes and Species Clause if you don't know about that already. So that's a Wonder Look rules pretty much over and done with so you're probably asking yourself what is the soul link well pretty much the solving soul link rules as as follows rule number one on a new route the first encounters in each game will be linked together until the death until death do them part right so pretty much as i'm going to be playing through pokemon x and y the encounters could be completely different so Obviously, I could in obviously the when I get first get Pokeballs in Pokemon X, I could encounter Fletchim. In Pokemon Y, I could encounter a Bunnelby. It could be completely different, and those two pairs will be linked together if I capture them. Rule number two: If one Pokemon is placed in the PC, the partner in must be placed in the PC as well, the sole linked partner. So, for example, as I was saying before with the Fletchling and Bunnelby, if Fletchling gets put in the PC, Bunnelby must get put in the PC as well. If one Pokemon in a pair dies, the partner will die along with it. So pretty much, if the Bunnelby dies in Pokemon Y, the Fletchling in Pokemon X dies with it because those two partners are linked. You know, if one dies, the other one dies. Simple as, really. Rule number four. Let me just get it up here real quick. Where is it? There it is. If I fail to capture a new Pokemon in one game, I have to sacrifice my encounter in the other game. So say we go move on into Santaline Forest, and my first encounter is a Scatterbug. And if I fail to encounter that, my first encounter in Pokemon Y could be a Kakuna. No matter how, no matter whether or not I try to capture it, I can't capture it, just because of the fact that I failed to capture the Scatterbug in Pokemon X. And then that's my encounter for Santaline Forest gone. So pretty much, if you fluff up once in either game it affects the other game so pretty much any action you do that's what the soul link is any action you do in one can seriously affect the other it depends like what decisions you have to make and what have you and then we move on into the even harder rules you know the different factors of it i guess this is part of the standard soul link that mud plays thought of originally but you know it just makes the game that much harder if you think about it so rule number five Primary typings cannot be repeated across both parties in a different save file. So, for example, say um, I got a um, say I got two Fennekins from Wonder Trade in different games. I can't have that because they're both fire. They're both pure fire. But if say if using a different example here, say I got a Fleshling and a um, what's a, a different type of bird? Say I got a Fletchling and a Ducklet. That's alright, because even though they both retain flying typing, that's their secondary typing. Fletchling is normal, pure primary typing, and then Ducklet is primary water typing. So that's okay, because they can both retain their secondary typings as long as their primary typings are different. Do you guys see where I'm going with that? Obviously, if you've watched King Nappy and Shady Penguin and Mud Plays, and obviously they'll probably have explained this better than I have, but hopefully you guys understand the idea. And finally, a Soul Pink Soul Link pair must consist of one male and female Pokemon. Obviously, with genders being being introduced into the game ever since Generation Two, it it's pretty it's pretty wise to have like think of it as like a marriage. You know, most marriages are um, one man and one woman. I'm not de degrading any gay or lesbian couples out there. 
Just saying. <laughs> Let's try and keep this PG. Um, so yeah, a, a Soul Link pair must consist of one male and one female Pokemon. Pretty logical, right? So, for example, say, I know I keep on blabbing on about Wonder Trade and what have you, but say I got a male, flitch, male Fleshling and a female Bidoof. Even though those two are the opposite genders, I can't have them because they're both normal typing. But say if I got a um, a male fleshling and a female and a male azumarill, although those two have different typings, they're both the same gender. So it it's just the factor of the typing or the gender. It can really affect like how many times you use Wonder Trade with the Wonder Lock rule in place. So that's pretty much the soul link there, you guys. So. Whatever way you look at it, if you look, if you have an action, if you have an action that affects one game, and the action could affect the other game. So, pretty much as I go through this game, I have to really, really think about what I have to do. Although now that I'm thinking about it, you guys, I'm I'm probably gonna upload this on the Monday as an extra upload, just because you, then you guys can see what's gonna be happening on the Tuesday. So you guys will see this on the 16th, and then the the first episode will go up tomorrow, which is the 17th. But anyway, you guys, I really do hope you are looking forward to this Let's Play, as I am. I'm sorry I've took so long to explain it, but hopefully you guys do understand the rules. Obviously, they're not there on screen. If not, all the rules will be in the description, down there in one place, probably at the bottom. So, you guys, if, you're ever, if you guys are ever confused, hopefully you can check the bottom of the description. Or, you know, just look at my gameplay experiences, and then hopefully, as you, as you, as you, um, you get into more episodes, hopefully you understand. But yeah, you guys, I want to thank you guys so much for watching this introduction video. And I hope you are hyped for this 7th Let's Play as I am. If you are, please smash that like, thumbs up button to show your support and appreciation for the series. And obviously, if you want to keep on top of this series, please make sure you subscribe to Ultrasec for all latest Ultrasec content. However, you guys, I want to go ahead and get out of here. You guys are amazing. I think of the great. This is me, signing off.